The dwarf walks up to you and says, Hi, my name is Nockwist. I'm a dwarven blacksmith. Or... The dwarf walks up to you casually. He says in a gruff voice that sounds as if he is angry, Hi, my name is Nockwist. I'm the blacksmith. He doesn't seem particularly interested in your response and doesn't seem to want to be here. Which of those is better? Hopefully the second one is, we're talking how to do accents and bring your dialogue to life if you don't do accents. Hello and welcome to this week's episode. My name is Guy and we're talking about how to do NPC dialogue if you don't do accents. Now, I absolutely I love running through different types of accents, even though some people tell me that my accent is absolutely terrible. Well, that's okay, because I am the one who is enjoying doing these accents. I love changing the way my mouth moves and the way my tongue moves and thinking about exactly how the people are going to take a response to the different type of accents accent that I happen to be presenting to them. It's a lot of fun for me, but I do know for a lot of people this is something that is absolutely impossible. It is not uh, in the uh, ear of the listener to understand exactly how uh, accents work, and as a result they don't know what to do. I love accents. I love doing accents. And I've done a video on how to do accents. And it boils down to practice, 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 practice. But if you can't do accents, how then do you do it? Well, the best way to do it, as far as I am concerned, is to then start to look at other options. And the very first one is body language. Now, Ursula did that whole spiel in The Little Mermaid where she talks about the importance of body language. I love that movie and possibly was inspired to take on Ursula's shape as a result of that. But anyway, um, enough about me. The whole idea of body language is not that you necessarily have to get into body language, although, in truth, that is something that I would strongly suggest you do. If you're not comfortable with that, if you prefer just to sit where you are, or if you're using Skype or Zoom or whatever the uh, um, program is that you're using for playing over the internet during the time of COVID, body language, in this sense, is describing the body language. If you say the woman walks over to you and says hello, that doesn't give us any information. If you say the woman hunched over and racked with pain barely manages to drag herself over to you, she looks up at you with great sad eyes and says hello, there's a very different tone that has been set. And all I've done is describe her body language. Body language for us as humans, and for those of you that aren't, is really important. We absolutely derive a huge amount of information out of body language. I love body language as a topic and as a subject, and I could talk on it for ages because it is absolutely fascinating what people do when they are using body language to communicate unconsciously with each other. All right, so body language is number one. Number two, think about the ancestral heritage of the character. The dwarf walks up to you and says, hello. The dwarf walks up to you, and in a heavy accent that is reminiscent of the highlands, those great rolling hills, he says in a voice that carries intense weight and the history of his people, hello. Just describing ancestral heritage. Call it racial heritage, call it special heritage. Species inheritance? I'm not sure. The lizard man walks forward, his scaled lips part, and with limited ability, he hisses out a sibilant sentence and simply says, I am glad you are here. Seek not that which you seek. Again, just describing things. Throw in the body language and suddenly you're getting a much more vivid image of this character. The voice is not changed. It's not the sibilant hissing of a serpent creature. It's not that. It's describing it as a, almost a whispering whistle or a whispering sibilant sound. So those are really, really indicative, I think, of creating or, or setting up what we expect to hear in our heads. Then we can add in level of education. 
It's important to bear in mind that just because you're not doing an accent doesn't mean that you can't dumb down or improve the language of the character speaking. Oftentimes people say to me, how do I make a wizard sound like he knows what he's talking about? Well, generally speaking, people who know what they talk about use a lot of acronyms, they use a lot of jargon that is appropriate to their area. So if you're wanting to create a wizard who's highly intelligent, you might say, although his frame is wiry and his beard looks as if it was blown backwards in a hurricane, his spring in his step indicates a certain youthfulness. As he speaks, his words tumble over one another like a waterfall of knowledge, splashing and pouring out in all different directions. There is a certain agedness to his voice, a rasping uh, maturity, but he still seems to know what he's talking about. Well, of course, the inversion of the evocation was as a result of transmutation incorporation in a very specific form of arcanomutation. Still simple dialogue, but we've thrown in a whole bunch of words now, which I may have looked as if I was stumbling over, but perhaps that's his waterfall of words. That's the one extreme. The other extreme is someone who's uneducated. In a broken accent with limited lip movements, the lizard man hisses out his sentence. Food. Distant past. There. Dark rock. Exactly the same effect. I think you get the idea by now. So, level of education is a great one. That's number three. Number four is use a descriptor. And I've been doing this already. Describe the sound. So you talk about body language, you talk about ancestral heritage, you talk about level of education, and then you talk about how it actually sounds. Like dry paper being turned over, with a crackle, with a rasp, with a clarity, with an authority, with a sense of ownership, with pride, with lust, with indignity. All these descriptors you can throw in there, and yes, it does require you to have a thesaurus nearby so you can keep track of all these fancy words that I'm throwing out, but we have a general grasp of the language, hopefully, and then we can describe it. Now, something else that was often asked of me is from people who do not have English as their first language. So if you are playing your game in German, for example, yes, there are different accents of German around Germany, but do Americans sound very different speaking German to, say, the British speaking German? There might be a subtlety, but it's not necessarily going to be the same dramatic difference as perhaps, say, an American who's speaking with a very American accent versus an Englishman who has a very clipped English English accent versus perhaps someone who is from South Africa and rolls everything around and sounds very much like this. So those are three very, very different versions. So how do we do it in a foreign language? If, the, well, it's, if it's our language and English is a foreign language, how do we do it? Well, we're doing it this way. We're describing with words the sounds that those accents are. All right, so describe those sounds. And then finally, this is an old trick from film and television, is give them some kind of prop. It, uh, it is all about building up this image of this NPC. Now, you've described how they look. You've described how they stand, what their body posture is like. You've described what their ancestral features do. But if they have a pipe, and I'm just grabbing a pen here quickly, and you say, the dwarf hunched over with age, waddles up to you, his grey eyes seek out forward, trying to see what they cannot see, a pipe hangs from between his yellowed teeth, and he mumbles deeply and darkly, well, I don't know where they've gone. Hopefully you can keep it in your mouth. Maybe not a pen is not a good idea because I have sucked ink before. It's awful. Uh, but give them a prop. Give them something to play with. I didn't change his voice. I didn't do what I would have done, which was perhaps to give him some kind of old uh, Scottish type of accent, making him sound really frail. I didn't do the accent. I just did a straight sentence. But because I had that thing in my mouth, it suddenly changes how everything sounds. And so in a broad manner they have a slight different sound to the rest of them. 
Those are my thoughts in terms of how to do dialogue. Very short little video today. Um, and it actually is a short video. I'm not going to speak for another 20 minutes now. That's what I do when I don't want to do an accent. Or when I kind of go, I don't know what accent this person should do. I'm going to describe them more in detail. I'm going to give all of that information to my players. I'm going to let them see, see what this character sounds like. I know that's insane. But I'm going to describe it to them so in their head they are then putting an accent on the words that I'm speaking. It's what we do in books all the time, by the way. The author is giving us written communication, and then we're translating that into our heads. So just do that in your game, and you'll be absolutely golden. This week's sponsor is tabletop.enhancegaming.com. Link down there. There. I don't know where it is. It's down there, and you can find it in the doobly-doo below as well. Tabletop.enhanced gaming, or enhanced gaming as they call themselves, they got hold of us and they said, look, we've got this case that we'd really like you to talk about. And I went, well, cases, I don't know. Well, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. So they sent me a product sample. And this is the product sample. Now, it's quite big, and you go, oh, all right, well, it's quite bulky, but it's got a nice little handy little carry tag thing. And I went, well, what can you put into it? Well, what can't you put into it is the real question. So if you are optimistic, and we're going to be traveling again in the near future, well, a nice, big, robust brass zip. I like that. And then when you open it up, you suddenly realize there's a whole lot of stuff in here that's really cool. So, you got a dice bag, of course, or it's a space for something to keep in there, which is always good. We've got a pen, you know, pens and, and that sort of thing. I like that. There's an inbuilt dice roller, so you simply place this down on your table, and that's where you're going to be rolling your dice. Now, this side, of course, this you can write on with a dry erase marker. It's a plastic cover, which sits over your character sheet, perhaps, or me as the GM. I've got some random table generators in there, so I can now mark off things as I'm working, so I like that. And then when you flip it over, if you're a GM, you have a nice prep surface here for your models, or for dice rolling, but also you've got a nice big pocket for keeping all of your minis in there, you can put some extra dice in here, whatever you like, and it all just folds neatly away, and what I particularly like, especially with regards to the minis, is that... It's quite a robust case covering. I can't really indent it. If I press with my fingers, I can't actually indent this stuff. So Enhanced Gaming sent this to me. I have to say I'm super impressed. And the next time I'm going to a convention or the next time I'm going to go and game somewhere, this is definitely what I will be using to carry everything is. And it's got these nice solid brass. They're not plastic. They, 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 they're very nice. Nicely done. Anyway, tabletop.enhancementgaming.com. Link down below. Go check them out. Show them some love. They've got a whole bunch of stuff. This is not just it. Now, I also know another friend of mine, who uh, names won't be mentioned, who's actually got their entire backpack, which is spectacular. Go check out their website. I assure you, you will not be disappointed. To call it a 2021 survival optimist purchase for yourself. Promise you. I promise you, you will love these things. Anyway, until next time, thanks for watching. A big shout out. Big shout out, because I would be remiss if I didn't do it. I meant to do it before, and I haven't done it. And that is a shout out to all of the wonderful people who make our Discord work. So it is Eric, he, him, Ezreal. I have to read off the list, I'm going to forget. Master Arderna, uh, The Toblin, Commander Bones, and Tommy Dude. You guys make the Discord absolutely work. You make it an absolute pleasure. And I really, really appreciate all of the effort that you do. So, um... Thank you, and I hope that you are deriving some kind of enjoyment from it, um, being the masters of our Discord realm. Discord.gg forward slash greatgm if you want to join some amazing conversations. And that's it from me. Until next week, I wish you and yours the very happiest of gaming.